Hello everyone and welcome back to this full game walkthrough of Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. In this episode we are going to create a character and briefly talk about the companions and sidekicks you will encounter to round out your team comp. Let's start and skip the intro. Like I mentioned before, we are skipping the intro, which would be Aethys rising from underneath the castle and destroying everything. An aged dwarf shares this strange floating platform with you. His face is creased by so many wrinkles that his features lie buried amid shadowy pockets of skin. Still, the dwarf's well-practiced habits have left telltale tracks of a welcoming rictus across his visage. You can see his smile coming before it blooms, reshaping the dwarf's face from a hanging sack of flesh into something resembling an oddly carved Mary Gore. Okay, we get the point. So we're gonna come to talk to Bareth and I am going to get more information about what has happened. Sit, please. Thank you for joining us, Watcher of Cadnua. A pale, slender neck rises from the gorget. Topped by a hollow face, she is preoccupied with the arrangement of cards on the table between you. Your brush with the Divine has drained you of your powers, fractured your memories. Look upon these cards. They represent the courses of your life. You alone know best how they flowed. Arrange them to fit what you remember. Okay, so this is, uh, I don't have an import to bring in from Pillars of Eternity 1. So I get to pick which uh, choice I made. I'm gonna stick with Fair and Balanced, which is um, I pledge myself to Bereth, which that is Bereth there. So let's uh, use Selected History. Does everything appear to be in order? Yes. Good. Welcome to the beyond. I am Bera. One half anyway. The dwarf's rictus returns as he nods in the woman's direction. Tell me, do you remember when we last met? I think so. I pledged myself to do your bidding in exchange for your aid. And though you could have broken your pledge when you defeated Theos at Sun and Shadow, you did not. Admirable. She delicately places a card on the table. A bell in a tower. You had need of the gods once before. Now it seems we have need of you. The being that occupied Odnua's statue beneath your castle was the dead god, Aeothus. Of this, we are certain. What we do not know is what his intentions are. This sums up exactly what the uh, intro scene is. Though Aeothus stole a large fragment of your soul, you were strong enough to survive the onslaught and enter the in-between. You and he are still connected. He has chosen a body made of living Atra, perfused with the power of thousands of souls, including yours. Am I dead? It no. But neither is your body truly alive. Your lungs draw breath, your heart pumps blood, but your flesh is as soulless as a hollowborn. That is, until I return you. She delicately places a card upright on the table. The art depicts souls flowing out of a pillar of Audra. Just a quick tip, if you choose the uh, I'm not doing this option, you will immediately end the game and return as like a rat or a, a ferret, something small and furry. It mentions that. So that will uh, end the game and roll the end game credits. So you have to pick one of the other ones. Well, I'd like to find him as much as you would. He destroyed my castle and killed who knows how many people are around it. I know. It is my business to know. 322 in Cadnua and your surrounding lands. Their souls remain in Aethys still. You have the power to save them. Serve me and I will return you to your body. Or don't. And return to the wheel. So this is the wheel option which turns you into a mouse or an animal. Uh, let's go. Let's get on with it then. Good. Before you return to Aora as my herald, you must remember who you were, the last whisper of life in death. For a moment, the sockets of her eyes darken, leaving the pits of a death's head gazing out at you. 
When you can picture your own face, the beyond will lead you back to your own kind, to the world of mortals. Okay, now that we're at the portion of the game that we can create our character, I am not going to spend a lot of time going over all the possible build combinations, as that would take hours. And I feel it doesn't address the more pressing issue with character creation, which is the group composition and how your character fits within it. So what I will go over is the roles that you need for a successful group, and which companions and sidekicks can fill that role. I believe this knowledge can help you build a character that can fill one of those roles, as well as which companions and sidekicks or even adventurers you can use to fill in the other gaps. Now you don't want to build your character around the group, you want to build your group around the character and there are many options on how to do that. I also wanted to mention that if you don't want to deal with the drama of companions and the sidekicks aren't working for you, then you can always create a new adventure at any tavern or inn and you have complete control over the creation of that character from the stats to the attributes to the background, the class, the race, everything. So that might be a better option, um, and it's pretty cheap for that type of customization. But they wanted to offer you a way to alternatively create a group. Alright, so now let's talk about the group makeup and the roles that I found you will need to successfully complete this game, as well as the best classes to fulfill that role. So the most important role you will need to fill is a tank. And for a tank, you will need someone to manage the tougher enemies and soak up most of the group's damage. Uh, the best classes for that are Fighter, Paladin, Monk, Barbarian is okay, and you can have any kind of combination of one or more of those classes. So there are three adventurers that you meet that can fulfill that role, and one of them isn't that good at it, but is an option. The best choice out of the companions is going to be Edar, and you will need to make him a fighter variant, and he also has the best tank stats outside of a custom character. The uh, second best choice is probably Merc, and you can make her a monk or a brawler, which is a monk fighter, and she has fairly good stats for tanking and higher dexterity, which will help with attack speed. The worst option out of those three is going to be Pelagina. Uh, you can pick her as a Paladin or a Crusader, which is a Paladin fighter. And her issue is that her stats aren't the best for tanking. She's more geared towards damage dealing and towards support. The next role that is going to be important to your group is going to be the healer with some support abilities. And support abilities are just uh, buffs to your group. So there are two options. The best choice is going to be Jote. Uh, you will meet her early on and you can make her a priest or a contemplative, which is a priest monk. Her issue is her intelligence is low and her dexterity is really high, but she is the best possible choice to fill the role. And then second choice is going to be Pelagina again, and you can make her a herald, which is a paladin chanter, and she does really good at buffing, but she's not so good at healing. And that's going to be very important to have a dedicated healer. And her stats are not the best for healing. So the third in the list of filling your group is going to be someone that deals damage and specifically can handle magic users, mostly through interrupts to their casting. So not emphasizing an interrupter early on was one of my biggest mistakes in my first playthrough. And you will fight a lot of mages who can destroy your group fairly easy if you don't have someone on them that can interrupt them repeatedly. So you have many options to fill this. Anyone who can be a fighter, a monk, a rogue, barbarian, and a cypher. Those are all classes that can interrupt on a regular basis. And even a chanter to some extent. Some of the best ones as far as companions go are Edar, Seraphin, Yadwin, Rek, and Merc. The other options are Aloth as a spellblade or battle mage, uh, Jote as a monk variant, and Maya as a scout with rogue abilities. The last one that is required for your group is going to be someone that deals AoE damage. And there are many times you're going to encounter a larger number of mobs and you have people to tank and you need someone to deal with that group at once. So there are a few options as far as companions and sidekicks go. Uh, the best are Aloth, Takehu, and Fasina. And the next tier I would um, add Maya if you make her a Geomancer, which is a Ranger Wizard. And then the last adventure is kind of a damage dealer, preferably ranged. And because the, there are some enemies you don't want anyone but the tank getting next to, so having a dedicated high damage dealer 
at a range is beneficial. Having someone that has a distract ability is also beneficial. So someone that could create minions or has a pet. Uh, so you can pick anyone who isn't stuck as a melee character. And most of the characters can use ranged weapons. Some just get bonuses when using them. The best companions for this final slot are Aloth, Maya, Takehu, Vecina, Seraphin, and Yadwin could fill that role to a lesser extent with small arms like pistols and blunderbuss. I would also recommend uh, a chanter uh, with summoning or a ranger that has a pet to help manage the larger groups of mobs that you may encounter. So as you can see there are many options for building a group and depending on what role you want to fill there are many companions and sidekicks and even custom adventurers that can fill that role as well. So now I'm going to create my character. I will be fulfilling the role of AoE damage dealer and I will pick a mage chander so I can build up an army. Uh, the minions can act as a distraction while also damaging enemies. So let's get to building that character and I'll go with some of the basics while I build the watcher. The first thing we're going to need to pick in the character builder is going to be the sex and race. The race is going to be the most important as we will need a boost to our intellect and there's only one race that fills that role at this time. So we will choose godlike and building a caster I tend to prefer the nature variant as it provides a power level increase when buffed to might, constitution, or dexterity. All right, we get to choose a size as a godlike, and it really doesn't matter as there aren't any sizes in armor like other games may have. Now onto the classes. We will choose a wizard first, then a chanter. And the main purpose of this is to use the chanter's summoning skills combined with the wizard's AOE to handle large groups of enemies. I will not pick a wizard subclass because we will need access to several schools of magic depending on the situation we find ourselves in. Okay, now let's pick the chanter and we will actually go with is the troubadour which will allow you to speed up resource generation or allow you the ability to stack buffs which is a good flexible option for this build. Now let's pick our chanter invocations and chants. I'm going to pick the Phantom Summon and the Chant that has a small heal and small damage over time. Both of these will be upgraded very soon to more beneficial spells. We are now going to distribute our attributes and as a Lord Master we will need to max out Intellect for several reasons. The first is Intellect affects the length of time before our summons despawn. And the second reason is that Intellect affects the size of our AoE spells and chants. So when we get to 20 points, we can double the size of our AoE spells hitting more enemies and our chance will also hit them from a farther distance away from us. Other stats we will increase are Might to boost our damage and Dexterity to speed up our casting time since summon spells take the longest time to cast. Perception isn't that important to us because most of our spells will be AoE and summons which is unaffected by accuracy. And I can sacrifice Constitution and Resolve now and can make up for the survivability later on with a few select mage spells and more powerful healing chants. Also, we can keep in mind that we do get plus two to all stats from Barret's Blessings. Next, we're gonna choose Old Velia for our culture because it's gonna provide even further bonuses to our intellect. And our background, we will be a hunter to get us started on alchemy, which we will abuse later on in the game. As far as weapon specializations go, the goal will be to stay away from the enemies. So the best choice will be to specialize in ranged weapons. I like a mixture of damage types, so getting a scepter will provide us with a ranged crush damage. And I like pistols because they work well with this build due to their low recovery time, which will allow us to take shots in between casting spells. Also, both of these items are one-handed, which is beneficial for a future ability that we will pick up. Okay. I'm going to skip the character cosmetics which have no effect on the character's abilities. And that will wrap up the creation of the character. So let's talk to Barath and finish up this episode. Go forth now Watcher as my herald. Know that I do not give you this title lightly. Find Aethys. Learn his plans. When I have cause to talk to you, I will summon you. With a quick gesture of her hand. You feel a sharp pain in what would be your chest. The pain continues, intruding deeper into your soul. A chime. Do not fear, Harold. It will not harm you unless you choose to cross me. I trust it will not come to that. Her the dwarf nods, contorts his face with his odd smile, and gestures to a new door. So that is going to be it for this episode. We are going to head over to our body and begin our journey as the Watcher once again. I thank you for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you again in the next one. Goodbye.